So the next step, the last steps, would be to make the lid. And I'll show you how I do that also. So this is one that I haven't glued on yet. So the lid I make in four parts. The lid itself, a little knob that goes on top, and then a little thing that fits underneath that I just dropped on the floor. Oh, I got it. And then just a dowel. I just cut a dowel to length so that it just glues together like this. Now, if you look at this one, um, this has a little base on it. This is the only, if you look at it, it's the only one that has a base. And um, you know why I made this one with the base? Uh, can you do it? Yeah, there we go. Do you see this little chip out here? <laughs> well, I had to make something bigger to hide the chip, so I made a base on it. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do this and how do I try to avoid making that chip because um, this, this one got the chip because it was the first time I tried it using the method I'm going to show you, but now I know how to do it, so I hope, so it doesn't do it again. Here you can pass, I'll pass this around. You can see what it looks like. So I start with a blank. And I drill a hole in the center, quarter inch hole. That way the dowel will fit in the, in the hole. Now, um, when I first did this, I did it on my, uh, I was going to do it on my uh, drill press. But I have a bench top drill, drill press, and when I put it on there, the furthest I could drill in was about there. So, <laughs> so I couldn't do it. So I just did it by hand, and it was a little bit crooked, and I wanted it straight. So what I did instead was I went back to this piece, I put it on. Um, In fact, instead of using the live center, I use this. This is essentially a dead center. It's a, it's a number two Morse taper, Morse taper with the same threads as on this live center. And I use that for making this jig. But anyway, I put it on with this. And then I just clamp, clamp this on. And uh, make sure that the place I want centered is right there. I stick a drill in here, drill bit in here, and I just use it like a, a drill press. And it works great. OK, so anyway, I've got a hole in it. So now what I'm going to do is use, OK, so I'm going to give an advertisement here. I'm going to use a screw chuck. And I have an inexpensive screw chuck. It costs, I don't know, $20, $3, something like that. But back here, we have a glazer one, which is an expensive one. It's really nice. I mean, I'd rather use that one. But I don't own it yet, not until after the quarterly drawing. <laughs> so my advice is, during the break, if you don't have a really good screw chuck, buy a bunch of tickets, because uh, you could win it. Except I hope you don't, because I'm going to win it. Yeah, that's right. OK, so anyway, I'm just going to put this on with the screw chuck. You can see, I don't know if you can see it from, you probably can't see it from there, but let me take it off. This is starting to chip away. That's going to be okay because that's going to go eventually, so I don't care about that. I guess I could do this. I, don't, I always hate to, I'm not going to do it. Not in front of everybody. <laughs> nah. <laughs> OK, so what I'm going to do first is the top. No, I already have one of these. So I'll do the top, and you can make whatever shape you want. If you look over there, I've got a couple different shapes. Um, I kind of like the OG shape. I guess I passed it around. But what I'm going to do is make it kind of come out like that. OK, so you just start making that shape. I guess I should true it up first. Forgot to do that. And what I also like to do is compare it with uh, the box and see if it's the right size. That's a little bigger than I might like, so I'll just take a little bit more off. Oh, 
Okay, so now I'm going to make the OG. What's that? Always. Every time. You always stop the lathe before you move the tool rest. Okay, so I'm going to make a curve here. And probably what I should do is plan a little bit. <laughs> I don't like to plan. I like to just cut. But I should plan a little bit and decide uh, where things are. So, for example, probably I'll, I'll put a line here. And that'll be the bottom of the top. And notice I, I have a little bit of a gap here, and that's because that's going to be what recesses into the, into the box itself. And then I want the lid to come down to here. So I'll make it about that thick on the edge. So now I have something to shoot for. I'm going to start here maybe two-thirds the way over, half two-thirds the way over. starting there. Okay, I'm about to the line there. So I'll stop there, and now what I'm going to do is just uh, put a little curve here that's convex. And then I'll blend them in. It's only a one-inch board, so you don't have a lot of choice as far as shape. It's got to be fairly flat, but you can do different shapes, too. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, of course, if I were doing this at home, I'd work a little more. There's, you know, there's not much tear out, but it looks pretty good. So let me get the edge here. So I'm just going to round this out a little bit. And then I need to and I'll work on that when I turn it around some more. OK, so that's, that's what that side looks like. One more thing, and this is what is kind of critical to keep it from chipping out like that one I was passing around in. What I'll do is I'll just cut a little bigger hole right there at the surface. That won't be visible because the knob will cover it. But what it does is when you're screwing it in, when the screw starts hitting, you've got some fiber support there. So it's not so likely to chip it out. OK, so now I might sand this first. Before I move on, I'd probably put sanding sealer on. So now I need to get this off. You can see it did chip out, but I don't care. I'm going to take that away anyway. So now I'm going to put a little spacer on here. And I made it so it's cupped a little bit. That way, because this is curved, so I want this to fit against it. Pretty close. Spacers protect two things. Protect the surface. Also, since it's cupped a little bit, it'll push up against the wood out here rather than just at the center. OK, so now I just have to kind of carefully do this. It should go into the original threads here with a little bit of luck. Yeah, I don't put a hole in when I do the, use the vacuum chuck. <laughs> in fact, that's how, I, that's how I used to always do it. What I would do is um, I would uh, put an expansion connection here, do the, do the top, um, turn it around, use a vacuum chuck, finish this off. But I kind of like this way. It's actually simpler. It 
works really really well. And you already, then you already have your hole made. You have to have a hole anyway. So. So what I want to do now is just kind of follow this contour. Ooh, it wobbles more than I like. Let me see if I can tighten it a little more. I don't think I'm going to be able to fix it. Okay, so it's going to wobble a little bit. That's worse than it usually is. I don't have my tape measure. Oh, I have this one, so I can use this. I want to see about how big I want this. So this is about seven and a half inches. So I want it uh, three and three quarter inches, a little less than that. But this I want to be loose. Uh, this is what Beads of Courage says. They want they want these lids to be loose. -fit. You don't want them tight fitting. So. Yeah, these, uh, I've got a box of them here. They cost uh, $20 for 25 So um, I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Okay, so what I need to do now is... do the line. No wonder I couldn't see it. All right, so you just cut to the line. Check it to make sure it's right. Yeah, it's, it's too loose actually. But that's okay. It's loose for sure. <laughs> okay, um, and then you can shape it however you want. I'm not going to do any more there. You get the idea of how that works. I think the reason this didn't do it is because uh, I think this wooden piece, I didn't cup it enough. You look at the how much it's cupped. Yeah, it's, it's it wobble. It it moves a little bit when I put it in there. So I should have had one that was cupped more. I think I put more curve on here than I did ones before. So I should have taken a little more time, made this more cupped, and I think it would have gotten a better job. But you can see kind of how it looks. It still looks pretty good, I think. Okay, so um, that's that. Now I want to do the. Uh, do I have time? Yeah, I've got. How long can I go? Is everybody bored yet, or? Another 10 minutes or so? Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, I use another piece of cherry. This is all cherry I'm using. And I already put a tin in it and made it round. So I'll... Uh, out. I'm going to need this in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to cut the, uh, the little uh, knob that goes on top. So I'm just going to use a spindle gouge. The fiber's running this way, so uh, I'll cut downhill. Not quite true, so I'll just true it up real quick. Okay, now I'm just going to start cutting the zip bar, making a bead.
I'm going to flatten it here on the top a little bit because I'm going to be drilling there anyway. And I'm going to start cutting the bottom here, trying to get the shape. This bead might be a little bit bigger than I would normally cut, but you want to make sure that it's a good size for kids to grab onto, and I think that's okay. But I, I think I might like a little bit smaller, but I'm going to just go with this. What I want to do next is drill a hole uh, to fit the beads of courage. Now, unfortunately, these aren't three quarters of an inch, but they're close to three quarters of an inch. They're a little bit bigger than three quarters, so it's probably better they're bigger than smaller. So I'm going to use a three quarter inch bit, and I'll drill in. remember how many turns. I'm trying to think. It's, I think it's five, but I don't remember. But it doesn't matter too much, and I'll show you why in a little bit. Okay, so starting about there. Let's check and see the depth. I have a caliper somewhere here. Did I leave it? Here it is. Okay, so. Yeah, here it is. Needs to be just a tad more. So I did five, so probably you want to do five and a half, maybe six. That'd be sixteenths. So every turn's a sixteenth. And if you go too deep, it really doesn't matter, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So I'm just going to go another turn or so. That should be fine. Now, I made this flat a little bit too much, so I'm going to have to uh, take just a little more off there so I don't have a flat on the top. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now what you have to do is, and this is not a fun part of it, is to just make that hole a little bit bigger. So what I use is a scoochie gouge. You could do something else if you prefer. Just something to get in there and take some material out. So. Probably enough. Maybe. Now, here's the problem. When you put it in, if you're forcing it in, how are you going to get it out? It's not. No, there's a way to get it out. <laughs> but I have to do something else first, though, before I force it in. The, this, this is just a little bit more than three quarters, and it may vary a little bit. They're not perfectly round. It's hard to get it. In fact, if you look at the profile um, this way, it's kind of barrel shaped. So when you put it in there, there's always a little gap there, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not too bad. Okay. I'm sure everybody wants to see me fit things, but I do kind of want to make this work here. See how that is. Just not quite. One more time, and then we'll do it no matter what. Because I think I could sort force it in now. If I make this one a little bit too big, you'll forgive me, I hope. I'll be able to force that. Well, maybe. You get the idea. Okay, what I'm going to do next is, um, I think I can force it in now, is drill 
a, a quarter inch hole on through. And see, that way I can get it out because then I can push it up through if it's, if it's a tight fit. And also I need the quarter inch hole anyway because uh, that's how I fasten it on. So I have a collet here. I'll just use that. But it doesn't matter how you do it, just a quarter inch hole. to do, let's see, I can't seem to find my, I guess I can use this. So I need to go from here all the way through, so I need to go two inches, and I didn't leave myself two inches, so I better back it out a little ways. That's about two inches. Okay, so I'm going to drill this through. If I go too far, that's good. I actually want to go too far. I'll show you why in a little bit, although it doesn't really matter. It's kind of fast. It's kind of slow. chips out. There. Okay. All right, so now we want to part it off. And um, I think I'll a little bit smaller base before I part it. I brought a parting tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to part it, but I'm not going to part it straight in. I'm going to part it a little bit of an angle. So when it sits on top of the box, the edge is tight. So I'm going to part kind of at an angle like this. And there it is. So that's what I want. This will fit in here, I hope. I should have taken more out. <laughs> okay, maybe it won't. But <laughs> you get the idea. But if, it, if that happens, you're not sunk. What you could do is you could use a dowel, a, a steel dowel, put it in here, mount it, mount it uh, to a Jacobs from Chuck or whatever you want, and then you can go ahead and work on it some more. So not a problem. You can still do that. So I'm not going to worry about this one. Um, of course, you'd have to sand this out or something. Let me just pass that around. Okay, so now what I want to do is drill some more. It's in a little way. Maybe it's far enough. Let's see. Because I want to make the bottom part. Where did I put my? Uh, oh, right here. Let's see how deep that is. Oh, that's plenty deep. So what I'm going to do is mark how deep it is. So that was right there. So the hole comes to right here. So what that means is I want to go a little bit further than that. So right here is that line's where the uh, hole stops. So right there is where I'm going to make the. Uh, well, maybe I better make it a little bit more than that. I'll make it out a little bit further, maybe right there. 
Okay, so here's what I want to do. I'm going to uh, take the material out to that second line there. I'll just part it off. Uh, yeah, I can just part it off. Question? No, I'm going to turn it around and shape it. Um, I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so um, the idea is this. Here's the hole. That's going to be, here's the, here's the lid. It's going to be up like this, right? So what I need to do Oh, I should have, well, no, that's okay. So what I'm going to need to do is shape the bottom part here. That's the part I cut off. So what, I'm, what I'll do is I'll mount this in a, uh, one of these dowels. Need to take the chuck off. I learned when I started making spindles of using the dowel. Um, you can have one of mine if you want. I've got a whole bunch of them. Uh, you, uh, what, no, what's it called? Um, Inco. Inco. Uh, they had them for like, I forget, two or three dollars each, or you could get a hundred of them for twenty dollars, a lot less. So I bought a hundred of them. So I have funny if you want one. Okay, so I'm just going to make a little cap here. Just a friction, fit. friction fit, yeah. It's a small diameter, so not much, not much resistance on it. it. It works pretty good. whatever shape you want and then I'll part this off and I'll kind of oops clean that up just a little bit okay so I'd sand this now and part it Now, normally I'd sand that. It's a little bit rough there, but a little sandpaper would take care of it. And that, that'll fit perfectly then underneath. The dowel will fit in there, and that's the box. And the hole doesn't go all the way through then? Right. If you look at it, the, you can see the hole there. It's, I stopped. You know, I, I cut it a little bit deeper. That's why, that's why I marked it. Yeah. You know, I marked where the hole stopped, and I marked where um, I wanted the top of it. Okay? So when you glue it together... You get your dowel, which, oh, I guess I don't have a short piece. I passed that around. But you get your short piece of dowel. Pretend this is a short piece of dowel. Glue this one in first because it's not a very big, you know, hole. Cut it to approximately the length you want. Well, I don't have the thing I turned. But you cut it approximately the length. The, the hole in the knob is fairly long, so you don't have to get it exact. You know, wherever it stops is fine. So then you glue that in, put it together, and you're done. And that's that's how it works. So these boxes are a lot larger than I thought they were. That's the size that he encourages that. Yeah, they ask for boxes. They say they want them at least um, six by six by six by four, I believe, isn't it? I think that's what it's, they say. So what? So if you look at that, six by six by four is 144 cubic inches. If you look at these boxes, they're um, eight inches diameter, four inch radius. So that's about 48, 50. Um, square inches. 
multiplied by about four inches. We're about 200. We're a little bit bigger, but not much bigger. Yes. Yeah, if you think about it, these kids have serious problems. They're going to have enough procedures that they're going to anywhere near fill a box like that with relatively small beads. You know, that's, that's serious. Okay. Yeah. They have needs for smaller ones, too. They do have needs for smaller yeah. ones. Well, right, right. Yeah, if you, if you Google Beads of Courage, you can find all the information. Um, I have, okay, so what, what David and I did is we made a bunch of these. If anybody's interested, you can have one. We have some that are um, oak. We have some that are cherry. Um, but we're only providing this part. You're up, it's up to you to provide the lid and the base and the knob material. But um, basically, you can do it the way I did it tonight or however else you want to do it. But these are already cut and ready to glue together. Um, also, if you do that, these are four beads of courage. We're not giving them away f for you to give it to your wife or something. <laughs> you know, they're four beads of courage. Um, and you can have one of these beads, too. I'll give you the, one of the beads. OK, so are there any questions? OK. Thank you. <laughs>